Hi everyone, Kate here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to tint historical face powder recipes to better suit your skin tone. I love creating face powders using antique recipes. They tend to produce a fairly light powder, which does happen to suit my particular complexion. Most of these powders do also work with a wider range of skin tones than one might think, due to how sheer they are, but no shade will work for everyone. I usually try to list some simple alterations that can be made in my recipe note section down in the description. But as I've been getting a number of queries on this topic lately, I thought perhaps it was time to tackle the subject in a bit more depth and provide some suggestions on how you can customize virtually any historical powder. Now, it's nearly impossible for me to list all the different tints for powders, so in this video I will just be providing a few examples to give you a jumping off point for blending your own. Some of the lighter shades are based off of suggestions from historical pharmaceutical books, such as the Druggist Circular Formula book from 1920, and I will also be listing some pigment options for darker skin tones as well. For my powder recipe today, I'm using two tablespoons of arrowroot starch and half a teaspoon of zinc oxide. The effect of adding pigments to a more opaque base powder might differ slightly, but the general principles will be the same regardless of what powder base you're using. Historical pigment options often included things such as carmine, bowl, ochre, lead, <laughs> but today I'm just going to be using red, yellow, and brown iron oxides as my pigment choices. To get your custom color, you will need to experiment with adding small amounts of these three pigments to your base powder until you end up with the shade you want. You're likely going to need less than an eighth of a teaspoon of pigment for most shades, and for lighter shades you really only need a tiny, tiny pinch. I'd recommend starting with less pigment than you think you need, and only adding more as required. However, if you do get the powder too dark or too pigmented, you can always add more of the base powders to lighten it up again. Now I've gone over the blending procedure for making powders in basically any of my other powder videos, but as a quick refresher, here are the steps. Add all your powders and pigments to a makeup only coffee grinder. Place a piece of plastic wrap between the bowl and the lid to make grinding more efficient and less dusty. Speaking of dust, you're going to want to put on a good quality dust mask to protect your lungs. This is very important, safety first. Once your mask is properly secured, you're going to grind the powders together for 30 seconds. Tap the lid with a spoon and let the powder sit covered for at least two minutes to allow the dust to settle before opening. Check to see if the powders are fully mixed. If not, you can stir them with a spoon and then just repeat the grinding process again. Also, if you don't like the color, you can add more of the pigments at this stage and blend again until you're happy with it. Here are a few pigment suggestions to help you get started. You will likely have to adjust the shades to match your particular complexion and undertones, but this should at least give you a jumping off point. Adding just a tiny bit of yellow oxide produces a lovely cream color, which is often referred to in historical publications as a Rachel powder. This is a great shade for light, warm-toned skin. Even my smallest measuring spoon is too large, so I just grab a few grains of pigment on the end of a skewer or knife tip. Thank you. 
This next color is my personal favorite powder to wear. Adding just a smidge of red pigment to a base gives a beautiful pink tint. Historically, this was usually done with carmine, but I quite like the peachy pink tint that the red iron oxide gives. I sometimes also use a red mica to get a slightly different shade. This is a great powder for fair, cool toned skin. Now for a light brown shade, I prefer not to add just brown pigment to a lighter or mid-tone powder as it often has a rather ashy look. We will start by adding 1 32nd of a teaspoon of brown iron oxide. I'd recommend adding a little smidge of red and yellow. You can play around with the exact proportions depending on your particular undertones. I actually went back to this powder the next day and added a second smidge of yellow pigment as I didn't quite like the color once I saw it under daylight. To obtain darker powders, simply increase the amount of pigment. For very dark shades, you can sometimes get away with just the brown iron oxide but again, you may find it more flattering to add in some red and yellow to match your undertones. For this version, I added 1 8th of a teaspoon of the brown iron oxide, 1 32nd of a teaspoon of the red iron oxide, and 2 32nds of a teaspoon of yellow. Here's a quick look at all four of the final powders on my face. Obviously, the last two shades aren't intended for me, but I'm demonstrating them so you will get an idea of pigmentation. One thing to note is that most historical powders were designed to be very sheer, so you really don't need to get as close a skin tone match as you do with something like foundation. You can see as I'm trying on these four very different powders, there's really not that much of a difference. If you are looking for something with more pigmentation, I'd recommend adding both more of the pigments and more of the zinc oxide to the powder to give you something a little more opaque. Well, that's it for this video. I hope this helped you to be able to better customize some of my powder recipes or any other historical powder recipes you feel like trying. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them for me down in the comments. I'm sometimes a little slow at getting back to people, but I will get back to you eventually, I promise. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you.